All of the problems covered in my videos can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link, you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I've uploaded to YouTube. I've uploaded over a hundred extra videos on this website that you can't find on YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. All right, let's begin our problem. In this video, we are going to take on problem 7-2A. In part one, we're going to do FIFO and we're going to answer the questions related to FIFO method in parts uh, two, we're going to do LIFO and in part three, we'll do the weighted average method. Let's get started with FIFO. So it says Aberdeen Automart uses perpetual inventory system and gives us a bunch of data. Of course, our job is going to be to make sense of that data. In part A, we're going to prepare an inventory record. Part B, we're going to do some computation, sales, cogs, and gross profit. And part C, and this is new from 7.1a and 7.1b, we are doing journal entries, just a couple of journal entries for uh, uh, each item. And we'll do the journal entries uh, with each inventory record. So we'll start with FIFO. Um, Okay, so our beginning balance on May 1st was, let me flip back to it here, uh, 20 units at $3 per unit. Okay, so we didn't make any purchases, we didn't make any sales, we did have a beginning balance of $20, 20 units at $3 per unit. 20 times 3 is 60. May 1st is in the bag. Let's move on. Uh, May the 5th, we make a purchase. Five units at $3.25 each. Five units at $3.25. Five times $3.25 is 16. Ah, that's got to be rounding here. I'm going to, let me just do something here. Got a few more decimal places. Uh, I'm going to need them here too. Whoa. Other way. There we go. Okay. Uh, so I had 20 at three dollars for sixty dollars and i'm adding to that five at 325 for 16.25 okay moving over to our next uh item we make a sale 22 units 79 7.99 each well it doesn't matter that 7.99 each we want to know which 22 did we sell we're doing fifo so we got rid of all of our three dollar units and we got rid of two of our three dollar 25 cent units so 20 times three and two times 325 and i think i got to do that whole rounding thing here too there we go so uh i sold all of my 20 dollars units i sold two of my five uh my 325 units leaving me three left over three times 325 is 975. oops i didn't date this one what is the date the date is may the 13th and the next date will be may the 20th So on May the 20th, we made a purchase. We purchased seven units for 355. All right, so seven at 355. So that's 2485. We had three at 325 for 975. We're adding to that seven at 355 for 24. 85. Well, again, we're not attempting to total or combine this in any way. We're just saying that's what we've got. Uh, that's May the 20th. On May the 24th, we purchased five at $3.70. Five 
five times three dollars seventy cents is 1850 so we had three at 325 we had seven at 355 and now we're adding five at 370 these are just totals 975 24 85 and 1850 all right now we finally make a sale on may 31st we sell 13 units 7.99 a piece we gotta say which 13 units did i sell well first in first out says it's the earliest ones i purchased so i sold three at 325 i sold seven at 355 and uh we sold 13 was it yeah 13 so oops I must have sold three of those $3.70 units, right? Leaving me two. So equals that times that. I'll just pull that formula down. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. Uh, so again, we're left with two at $3.70 for $7.40. So what's the value of my ending inventory? It's $7.40. What is the... Uh, uh, sales minus cogs gross profit let's do that sales cogs gross profit product no profit my sales revenue got to go back to the question and say okay I sold 22 units at 7.99 I sold 13 units at 7.99 I sold 35 units in total at 7.99 if the price changed, I would just multiply them through. So let's say I sold, you know, 12 at 7.99 and 10 at 8.99. I would go 12 times 7.99 plus 10 times 8.99, right? And you'd, you'd figure out the sales that way. My cost of goods sold, just the sum of this row, all of my cost of goods sold added together. And sales minus COGS equals gross profit. Okay the next part of the question asks for journal entries it says give me the journal entries for the 24th and the 31st so that's what we're going to do we're going to give journal entries for these two uh dates so on may maybe i'll we'll do this in pen i've been working on this these problems all morning and i haven't used my pen once and i feel like i spent a lot of money on this tablet i might as well use it pens oh it doesn't want me to pen anything hold on pens ah there we go i'm gonna do it in red pen just to really make it stand out so may the 24th what happens well we bought inventory right may 24th let's go back to the question we make an inventory purchase we purchased five units for three dollars 70 cents each and we did the math and we said oh that's 18 dollars 50 worth of inventory so what i lost my pen debit inventory for how much 1850 credit if we bought it for cash credit cash let's assume we bought it on account credit ap for 1850 if it doesn't say in the question i think you can assume either way there if it's cash or ap i don't think you're wrong either way so that's may 24th may 31st a little bit more complex not much does it say in the question it doesn't say whether we purchase or sell things on account. I just didn't want to have the wrong thing in there. Okay, whenever we sell inventory, there's a few items we have to worry about. First, the sale part of the transaction. Let's assume we're a bit like Walmart. We buy our inventory on account, but when we sell it to our customers, we make them pay cash. So we debit cash, credit sales revenue for the revenue side, and we debit COGS credit inventory to record the fact that some inventory is walking out the door with my customers how much is walking out the door with my customers like what what should i record here well let's do this debit cash credit sales rev first uh i sold 13 units for 7.99 a piece let's just do the math up here in the corner 13 units times 7.99 104 oh that's going to be rounded uh let's turn off the rounding or get 103.87 that's my cash and sales revenue ah uh, come on you it was a mistake to use the pen i'm not going to use it next time 103.87 oh my goodness what happens 
I, my keyboard and my tablet layout are really awkward here. 103.87. So I end up brushing the keyboard and it means uh, it doesn't think I want to use my pen anymore and it screws me up. Uh, okay, so debit cash credit sales revenue 103.87. Well, what about the inventory piece here? Well, we know our cost of goods sold because it's this section and we know our cost of goods sold on May 31st is right here. So our cost of goods sold here, if I add that up, I get 4570. So the journal entry is debit cogs credit inventory 4570. So the journal entry in full debit cash credit sales rev for the amount of money coming in or the amount of if it was on account debit accounts receivable uh, credit sales rev debit cost of goods sold credit inventory for the amount of the cost of goods sold the whole purpose of this whole template the whole reason it exists is for these numbers it really does exist so we know our cost of goods sold and uh it exists then to serve that journal entry that journal entry we just did together where we went debit cogs credit inventory that's really what that's all about okay that's it for this part of the video. In the next video, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it LIFO mode. Stay tuned.